Well, good afternoon, good people. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Brew Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great day. I know it's hard because this is the de facto Monday since we were off yesterday stuffing our faces, which made us have that food coma, which made it even harder to get up on Taco Tuesday. I don't know how many of y'all having tacos today, but if you're having Taco Tuesday, make sure you have some good tacos. Nothing worse than having bad tacos, so stay away from, you know, Taco Bell. Ugh, that ain't the kind of tacos you should be eating on Taco Tuesday. Anyway, I've been thinking. I'm out running some errands and doing some stuff. And, you know, when I'm driving and things like that, I do a lot of thinking, which is dangerous. And listening to, like, Chris Canty. Chris Canty, I don't know why. He gets angry. It's like, you know, can they give him a Snickers bar or something? But he just gets this angry talk when he starts talking about the Cowboys. And he was talking about, you know, how stupid it was for them to get rid of Kellen Moore and everything else. That, you know, over the last two seasons, Dak Prescott has thrown, you know, 35, or has 35 turnovers in 31 games, this, that, and the other. And I'm like, hold up, bro. That may be true. That may be true. But it's kind of crazy because they still have been 12 and 5. It's not like we've been having turnovers and not winning games, right? You know, Daniel Jones didn't have a lot of turnovers this year, but he lost to Dak Prescott not once but twice. So which one of those would you rather have? Daniel Jones and his 15 TDs and only a few turnovers? Or Dak Prescott, the team that's got like, top five in every category in, in, in the NFL and offense. But be that as it may, I have a theory, a theory here, because everybody is praising, oh, Kellen Moore and all the statistics and everything else. There's sometimes, there's times where the safe move is the better move. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, with high risk, there's high reward. And I always remember how people used to say, well, you know, Dak Prescott, he's a dink and dunk guy. He's not risking the football. Okay, well, now you're risking the football. Now you're killing him for having interceptions. But I want to say that with Kellen Moore, there were times where you looked at it and said, why are we going for so much? Why is it we go ahead and do a little bit of that dink and dunk it? Because it's not like we didn't do that and have success. If you noticed how we changed the offense with Cooper Rush, where instead of risking the biscuit, that high yield, you know, what you know, where we weren't getting so many yards, but we were still winning games. And it felt like we were doing two totally different offenses between the two guys. Now here's the thing that's interesting, and maybe I just answered my own question here, but I saw a tweet um, about C D Lamb that there were seven games, seven games, seven games that CeeDee Lamb was targeted seven or less times. Seven or less times, seven games. Now, let's be clear here, okay? I mean no disrespect to Noah Brown, okay? A.K.A. Clifford Franklin, okay? I mean no disrespect to Michael Gallup coming back from injury, okay? But CeeDee Lamb was your de facto real weapon when it came to wide receivers. You have got to try and get the ball to him often. And if you're telling me that there were games that it was less than seven times he was targeted, that's on the play caller, the offensive coordinator. Because the problem is, is yeah, CD can catch it anywhere. He can catch it with people all over him. The other guys, they weren't getting separation. They weren't getting open. And I dare say that maybe some of the problem that we had with the turnovers, with all of these option routes where it gets to be a little bit too complicated, because here's the thing in football. When you have to think in football, when it doesn't become second nature, you've lost. Seriously. Everything is so fast that you've got to be able to hit that thing right now. And these combo routes and option routes and everything else are where a lot of these interceptions came from. And also, too, 
guys that don't have like fly paper for hands where they're tipping the balls up. Now, I'm not saying that Dak Prescott is not responsible for any of these interceptions. I'm not at all. But let's go ahead and, and get it rational here as everybody who is now on the, you know, but then again, it's always this way. No matter what move the Cowboys make, it's the worst move in football. It's, it, it all, it, it, that's what they always will tell you. You know, before Kellen Moore, what is Kellen Moore doing? You know, now all of a sudden we have revisionist history that the guy Kellen Moore is the greatest play caller in the history of football and that Mike McCarthy is a freaking idiot. Well, Mike McCarthy was the play caller. Aaron freaking Rodgers when they won the Super Bowl. Remember that. And um, last I checked, Aaron Rodgers, as great as he is, you know, the multiple NFL MVP, he ain't been winning Super Bowls without Mike McCarthy. And I'll take that guy over Kellen Moore, who has, what, one playoff win as the coordinator? Or two. Maybe two. It's two. I think it's two. Two playoff wins as an offensive coordinator. Just saying. <sighs> the stuff we deal with being a Dallas Cowboy fan. The amount of hate and everything else. And it's crazy that the Cowboys have done as much as they have and been as good as they have to literally make it sound like they're the worst team in football. Are the Cowboys the worst team in football? Babe? Mm hmm? Cowboys the worst team in football? Are they? No. I mean, we're talking about a team that was 12 and 5 two years in a row. Two years in a row. Made the playoffs two years in a row. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. Something that they haven't done for a long, long time. And for Chris Canty, I, like I said, I don't know what's wrong with Chris Canty. Chris Canty, oh, they're going to miss the playoffs. Miss the playoffs. You're telling me that you believe that there's seven teams in the NFC that are better than the Dallas Cowboys? I don't see it, but hey, what do I know? Works. Huh? You know how it works. How's it work? Just mention the Dallas Cowboys. Why Just is it? Work them into your conversation. Or you're dissing them. Yeah. Well, I guess Chris Canty trying to make a name for himself because he, he, he. I'm telling you, he needs a Snickers. All right, good people. I'm gonna go through here, run some more errands, then back to the red brick house tomorrow and see what we can get done in there, see if we can make it look a little bit better than what it did this week before the end of the week. And uh, I couldn't think of any better way to spend time except with this beautiful lady next to me. Thanks, babe. And I'll see you guys later. Peace.